look, it's been a, a tough year for emerging market performance and flows. What do the next 12 months hold, as far as you can tell? I think growth will moderately, moderately improve over yeah. 2014. I think the biggest thing to look at over next year, uh, the biggest impact uh, on the emerging world will be politics and geopolitics. If you look across most major emerging markets, uh, from India to China, they're either in the process of implementing reforms or in the process of, of deep structural changes. And the biggest impediment in a lot of cases is, is the political process. And so I think the biggest impact, especially in India, in terms of how they're trying to reform land and labor and taxes, uh, China as well, some very large reforms in terms of uh, liberalizing state-owned enterprises uh, and the anti-corruption crackdown. And then you have Russia with the Ukraine issue and sanctions. Uh, politics are going to play a, a very large role in 2015, um, both good and bad. I think a lot of the concerns are, are reflected in the price, and you can see that when you look at sort of emerging versus developed market valuations. I think some of the headwinds from oil price for the oil producers have been put into consensus for, uh, forecasts, but I think that the, the benefits for lower costs and improved margins for other companies probably haven't been put through into forecasts yet. So, so I think that's a positive that's still to come through. Um, for us, though, our approach is very much bottom-up stock picking. It's can we find stock ideas that we're excited about and um, certainly there's no shortage of ideas there in terms of technological change that we're witnessing um, various ways of playing the reforms uh, for, for example in India um, that, mm. that, that, that mm. are quite interesting. Emma what's what's your view in terms of your clients and how big a part of your clients portfolios are emerging markets now? Yeah, so we operate on a, a core and satellite approach. So we see emerging markets very much within a satellite element, whereby we are looking at a more alpha-driven investment. So we are keen to look at emerging markets in regards to a country level, um, kind of country-specific investments and allocations. So for the likes of um, Russia and Greece and various other economies that are exposed to geopolitical risks or to the, the fall in the oil prices, we would tend to try and move away from those. On the other side, those such as India, Indonesia, that are seeing good political reforms and are seeing benefits from the fall in oil prices, we would allocate more towards those. I think the most important thing for us is to find uh good active management because we what we do we ha do notice is that the 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 indices if you like can be made up historically of big energy producers big commodity producers both geographically and on a company level so most important for us is that rather than uh trying uh just go into a pot which will then be allocated to on a on a money flow basis we want to find managers who are looking at proper bottom up opportunities because they're, they're, that is where the real growth is, whether it is in new technologies, whether it's in the dom domestic consumer, or whether it's export opportunities, there's a dollar strengthens and there's an American market opening up to producers. It's finding those companies and relying on managers who can do that for us, rather than thinking, here's an X, X amount into an emerging market mm -hmm. pot, because that just isn't going to work, I don't think, in the future. We saw a lot of change last year with governments, um, which we've already talked about. We talked about Indi we've talked about Indonesia, we've talked about India. Both, I think, distinguished themselves by having reform-minded governments actually coming in. This is clearly very important. Um, give us, a, give us, give us a view how you see how important those kind of reforms actually are. There are some quite staggering examples of of just what reform can mean in practical terms. This GST that's being talked about in India doesn't sound very exciting to talk about sales tax. But if you imagine a situation where you've got a yarn producer and a garment producer, you've got to get the yarn to the, to the garment producer. It, that might take 14 hours to do a journey like that in China. It would take between 55 and 65 hours to do that journey in India because every state the yarn passes through, you've got to sit in a queue and yeah. uh, sign a tax bill around that. Yeah. So, so, so taking out that would be massive for productivity. From a, a fund manager's perspective, um, in terms of positioning, do you stay in the more expensive, dependable consumer, consumer sectors or do you feel it's worth taking a chance and rotating into some of the stocks that look particularly cheap in the commodity sectors uh, today? We go where we feel 
um, there's mispriced change effectively. So, you know, a company that is very cheap, let's say, um, but there's nothing changing, and we know why it's cheap, and, and that's not changing, isn't interesting to us. So just being cheap isn't enough. Um, just being good quality or high growth isn't enough either if that's fully priced in. So, so, so we're looking across the market in terms of valuations, uh, but we're, we're looking to identify uh, change that the market hasn't spotted yet, which we believe is going to be a, a, share, a key share price driver. So it feels like the gap between the sectors perceived as high quality and those not uh, in GEM is higher than it's ever been and higher than elsewhere, anywhere else in the world. So there has been quite a lot of clustering in the perceived safe havens of a relatively small number of uh, expensive consumer stocks. But I think f starting from this, this valuation gap, then it's, it could be quite a risky approach. There's a, a lot of good news priced in to a relatively small subset of emerging markets. And you really need a, a flexible approach to pick up positive change across the spectrum.